Greetings. In our previous video we talked about the basics of animation and how to animate figures. Showed the two main tools that you need and how to use them. Introduced keyframes and explained them. So if you are confused at any moment of this video, make sure to watch our previous animation tutorial. In this tutorial we are not going to work with figures at all, so I will delete this. Instead we will see how you can animate other objects. Because this is a common task that you may need to do. Maybe you want your character to take something. Open a window, or a door. We will look right into that. Starting with the basics. I will use primitives. You can add a primitive by clicking on a create new primitive button on a toolbar. There are several types of primitives we can use, but it does not matter right now. I will use a cone. Select it. On the right in the parameters window you should see all the available transforms. Objects don't have preset animations, so we won't use animate light in this video. Instead open a timeline. There are no keyframes here. So I have created one. This is done to save a current state of the object. A black triangle on the frame 0 shows that there is a key here. Now it is very important to change the current frame, not to override previous keyframe. After that you can proceed to make any changes to an object. For example, you can move it on all Z, Y and X axis. This will create a keyframe automatically. When I press play, we will see animation playing out. Cone is moving on all three axes. Besides moving, we can also animate other transforms. For example, rotation can be added too. Pay attention that even though I have added a rotation key on frame 60, the cone begins its rotation at frame 1 and continues through whole animation. That is because on frame 30 I have only transformed location of an object. Thus only location keys were created and remembered. Similarly, if I change the scale on frame 30, this would not be animated at all. As I don't have scale keys anywhere but on frame 30. I will change the scale on frame 0. And on frame 62. Now as I have three scale keys created, scaling process is animated. Object scales down through all 60 frames of animation. Basically almost everything from parameters menu can be animated. But these kinds of animation are very basic. And it can be very hard to create something that moves differently. Let's take a door as an example. It sounds that you would need just to rotate the object a bit on Y to animate door opening. But it does not work like that at all. When I rotate this cube, it is rotated around its center point. Meaning that center remains still, while everything moves. While doors are not rotated like that, instead corner should remain still. We will need to create a rig for an object to make it rotate like that. Select an object and go to the edit. Object. Rigging. Convert prop to figure. In appeared window change default rigging type to the general weight mapping instead and press accept. It seems as if nothing changed. But if you take a look at the scene tab on the top right, you will see that our cube is now a figure. And even has a bone. This means that now we can rig it to match our intentions. To make it look more like a door, it would be a good idea to scale it on X and Z axis. This is much better and resembles a door. Now we need to create a face group that we will rig. For this open a geometry editor and tools list. And select all the faces. You can do this by clicking on faces manually. Or by clicking and dragging to select multiple. But this is not the best method, because it is easy to miss faces just like I did here at the bottom. Instead we can change the selection mode to marquee selection. 
This allows to click and drag anywhere to create a box. Any face inside this box would be selected. With all faces selected right click anywhere in the viewport. And select geometry assignment, create face group from selected. Give this group a name. It can be any name that just would be comfortable for you to work with. Nothing should happen yet. Before proceeding we need to open another window. It is called tool settings and is found as any other window in the window, panes menu. It allows you to work with tools more comfortably. And have some additional functionality too. Now we need to change the tool to joint editor to work with the bones. Right away you can see a weird shape in the middle of the object. This is the bone that I have talked about earlier. And exactly it controls how does this object move around. As it is located at the middle with origin being at the bottom. All the rotations are made around that point. We will create another bone that behaves differently. To do that, select the current bone and right click on it. Then go to create, create child bone. But rotation order is important. Make sure that the rotation order of the child bone that you create matching the rotation order that you see in the tool settings window. Bone name does not matter again and bone label will just copy the name. The bone appeared. But it is huge and located out of the object geometry. You can try and fix that by moving the bone with the axis gizmo that is found both on the origin point and end point. Use front view to see better what are you doing. Or you can use tool settings window and write exact values to position it more precisely. Now it is matched with the original bone and we need to move it to the corner. Again, you can use axis gizmo or type in values directly. It is placed right on the corner. But rotating it still does absolutely nothing. Just the bone moves and door stays where it was. Now change the selection group and the tool settings from none to the one that you have created earlier. Rotation still does nothing though. This happens because bone is not connected to anything, there is no weight map for it to work with. So let's create one. Change the tool to the node weight map brush. Here select general weights map, there should be already created here. This allows you to click on the object and add weight anywhere. This weight decides which parts of the object are influenced when you transform the bone. So when I try rotating it now, you can see that the red parts are influenced more, blue parts less and yellow parts are not moved at all. The most important thing is that they are rotating around the bone that we have created earlier. For this door object, there is no need for Precy weight mapping, as with the most objects. So you can just right click and go to weight editing, fill selected, and fill everything with same value, most probably with 100%. Now the whole object has the weight value of 100, which can be seen by a red color. And when I rotate the door bone, it finally moves like the door should. Rotating around its corner. When returning to the regular select mode, we can see that visually absolutely nothing has happened to our door. It looks the same. But you can now rotate it as if you have rotated the door and animate this like the door really is opening. Just create a key at the zero frame. Change the frame and rotate the door. This will create a keyframe automatically. And now you can see that door opening is animated. This method works with any object that may need this treatment. Maybe your windows open differently or you have an object that is used by the character in some way. In any way, now you have an idea how you can rig an object to animate it better. Don't forget to visit our website, 
renderguide.com. There you can find articles such as the ones that this video was based on, DA Studio Animation Tutorial. Where you can find even more about animating in DA Studio. Mainly talking about figure animation. And the DAS 3D how to rig any door and prop to make it open. If you want to read about creating a door and rigging objects. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get more inspiration.